All right, so here's a deadlift analysis of a viewer, a subscriber of mine, and wanted to see if we can improve his form. Let's take a look here. So you can see how his hips shoot up just before the bar leaves the ground. The timing isn't too bad. That's going to happen from time to time. But when you're uh, ideally, you want them to happen at the same time. Okay, so let's continue to play this video. Let's clear this. And then it's kind of right there. At this point here, you can see there's actually a significant amount of distance between him and the bar at that point. It would be nicer to see his shoulder here to be a little bit further back, just a tiny bit. Meaning that it would be great, I guess in a perfect world, to have his shoulder maybe right there. Oops. Maybe right here instead. So just for him to be just a little bit further back. That allows for him to get a little bit more leverage on the bar in the pull. And same thing. Definitely a, a lot of low back being done in this movement. Mind you, it's a very strong low back, which is kind of a good thing when you're when you're deadlifting. Always better to have a stronger low back than a weak one. But let's uh, let's go see if we can see this in slow motion. All the pulls pretty much look the same. Let's look at the last one because sometimes the last one almost always looks the best, or maybe second to the last one. Because what happens in the second to the last rep when you're doing multiples with deadlifts is that your form improves because you kind of find a groove. That's kind of what makes a max deadlift so hard is that you only have one repetition, and being able to find that groove on the first rep is not is not easy to do. So let's slow motion this rep here. So he, so he pulls, and you can see his back. See, this pull is actually a little bit better. So the bar, he lifts his body off the ground. And you kind of see how the, his hips move with the bar. This is a little bit better of a pull. It would be great if his back angle, which is how it is right there, it would be great if it was probably right here. You know, sometimes people make the mistake of, having the bank back angle like maybe too much like that and that's not good you can't do that um, but probably would have been best if he was able to get his back angle from here from from here to here from the initiation of the pull that way he get he would get more leg drive in the pull and we'll continue to play this I'll just kind of pause and stop and you kind of see this little angle here let me clear this I'm just getting used to this application uh, right there. Okay, so you can kind of see how this angle here, and then you can see how, again, and still a ton of distance there. And these are just some observations. The bar is pretty far from his body. His shoulders a little bit too far in front of the bar. Ideally, you want it to be just a little bit further back, and that would probably be better. Like at this, like maybe mid. This is about top of the shin. It would be great if he would be if he if he ended up here instead. All right, and then we we'll just continue to play slow motion. But overall, pretty strong pull. Let's take the slow motion off. We'll watch this a few more times. So that's really what it is. When you take a look at this kind of picture of a deadlift, it would have been great for him to make, get more weight off, get weight, more weight on the bar, make the weight more light, and improve his leverages by allowing his hips to be here at this point of the pull. And the best thing I can recommend is to improve your flexibility, to improve your hip flexion. I've made some videos on that, or you can look up some Kelly Starrett videos. But you gotta really improve the ability to flex the hip. Like when you get to this point here, this is hip flexion. When you reach down for the bar, right there, and then you begin the pull, you wanna be able to improve that. That way, your position is just a little bit more leverage. So that way you're able to kind of uh, use more of your body to go this way, if that makes any sense. Anyways, that's my video. Hope you like that and hope that helps you out, bud. All right, let's take a look at the squat analysis here of a subscriber, same individual as the deadlift. And it comes down. So he goes down pretty aggressively, which is great. Then he comes back up. And then you can see he starts to tilt forward a little bit. And he comes up. Overall, a pretty, a pretty strong press, which is very nice, very, very solid squat. The one thing that needs to be improved are some glaring weaknesses. If you watch Omar Isoff's video with uh, 
Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Hamilton talking about people who turn their squat into a good morning like you do right there, right? You, you start to tilt forward and you, then there's basically the good mornings right there, right? Because you want to, you should be more like this when you come out of the hole. And one of the reasons why you're kind of doing this two-part lift is because your quads are weak. Your quadricep muscles are very weak. So then, so when you get to this, so you see how you're at the bottom, and you start to come out of the hole, you start to pitch forward. Uh, these first few reps are not too bad. Let's go back a little bit again. Some of these reps here. Okay, so we comes down then he pitches forward so coming out of the hole and then he starts his hips come back come back too much and he leans too far forward and then he straightens out and makes the lift good then he goes down again pitches forward and then straighten out straightens out definitely needs some improvement in the quad area so I would recommend here maybe I mean he's squatting pretty low or low enough I would actually put his stance in a little bit lower so that way you can he can improve his quadricep strength and get closer in his stance and that way he has to stay more upright in a high bar squat I can't tell if it's a low bar it looks like a either mid or high bar squat and that way he can do a little bit lighter weight and really focus on building up those quads and just make him work harder because right now he's hip dominant uh, squatter and what we want to do is we want to improve his quad strength and then after he spends some time building his squat his quad strength then he can go ahead and uh, improve his uh, his ability to squat with better form because really when you squat with better form what you're doing is you're improving uh, you're improving your leverages so what happens is if you if the weight gets too heavy and he good morning is a weight it's not going to get back up uh, or I should say if he's good morning at this weight imagine if he builds his strength in his quads when he gets to that sticking point there where he begins to pitch forward uh, he's going to be able to do a lot more weight and another thing to also consider too when you look at these when I look at these videos and sometimes I forget to look at them even in my own videos, is uh, you got to look at his look at the bar path, right? So you got to consider the bar path. So you can see, overall his bar path is pretty damn straight. Oh, I, oh there you can see how I actually left the center there on that repetition, or it could just be my line. So as you can see here, uh, let's actually rewind. Let's start from the beginning again. Let's clear this. Let's just draw a line, and let's play in slow motion. He comes down. So you can see he stays fairly in line with the with the line that I drew. And then you can see how he, he leans forward too much, right? So then you can see that little line there. Actually, let me pick a different color. And then and then you can see how the it travels even further forward and further forward. And then it comes back up, comes back up, comes back up, and then comes back up. So you can base so his, so that's one so it's that, that one repetition's bar path was it was like this was started here came down and then came back up so that's very inefficient you want a straight line so that's kind of why you want to pick a lighter weight to work on the form this guy this gentleman is very strong he's able to move this weight pretty good it's not probably a heavy weight but it's it's probably too heavy a weight for him to keep perfect technique all right so let's go watch another repetition. So I'll just I'll draw the line from the bottom here. Oops. Clear. Okay. Clear. And there we go. And then we slowly go up, up. Look at that line. Beautiful line. Okay, so then starts there. You can see. And then oops. So there's a line. You can see how he travels in front of the line, front of the line, in front of the line, then travels still in the same same bar path. He's pitch he's pitching too forward. He's doing a good morning squat. His bar paths all over the place. When you're trying to build strength and really build your technical form, you're definitely going to want to improve that bar path. That's basically one of the first things you want to try to do when you're squatting. Is work on that bar path. And there's actually one really good way to work on the bar path. There's lots of different ways. You can work on your strength, like I said about quadriceps earlier. But also the thing to consider is that you can also try to improve. You can bring the bar further back. So assuming this is not a low, low bar squat, he can probably bring the bar further back on himself. And that will base that will that will make his his funky his uh, imperfect bar path that's like this exaggerated a little bit. If he 
what happens is if he if he this is the reason why you can bet, squat more on a on a um on a low bar squat is because what happens is the, the you move the bar from here to over here and what that does it changes your line a little bit and you'll get a little bit more efficient line and you get more leverage because you effectively shorten your spine anyway so that's the end of my video hope it was uh helpful uh thanks for watching